Hello, it's Travis Hupper back here just finishing up doubling up the base uh, 6 byte 5 lead Turk's head. Uh, I didn't mention before, but essentially the base tie is already established uh, to double it. Um, I'm sure most of you know this, but you basically just follow that cord on the right hand side all the way around the pattern. If it goes under, you go under um, the second time. If it goes over, you go over. Once again, make sure those twists come out. Um, over, under, it follows whatever the lead cord did. You want to end up doing the same exact thing. All the way around until you get back to where you started. Which is here. You can see that I'm no longer on the one pin, which I started here. Um, the reason for that is when I get the tie done and doubled, what I do is I drag the cords all the way to the end and make sure that they end up fairly even. Um, if this one if this one is much longer than this one, um, then what I'll do is take the longer one and chase it through the pattern. So I'll back the short one out, run the long one through, so I get at a point in the pattern where my cords are identical lengths. That way I know I'm exactly in the middle of my tie. Um, Anyhow, that's the, that's the base there. Now we can add the herringbone interweave. Um, while I'm getting the cord ready, I thought I would tell you also, um, you can find me on Facebook. Um, my website or my Facebook page is called Naughty by Nature, K-N-O-T-T-Y. Um, you can also find these billiard ball lanyards for sale uh, at theparacordist.com. He carries these now for me. Um, Kevin's a great guy. Um, got to know him making these ties. I like to get these cords kind of down the mandrel, just out of the way. Um, whether you just want to wrap them around the base, or if you want to tuck them in the end, it doesn't really matter. Um, just make it so that they're not in the way of the other cord. You could do either. You could wrap it around the bottom. I typically just like to tuck it up in there. And it's out of the way. So now we can start with the blue. Same thing, find the center of the tie. And actually, with the second color, what I can show you the easiest way to cheat to make sure you end up in the center is to just measure one of these. So, find the end of the blue and the end of the black where they come together here. Make those even all the way up. You get back to the tie, that's the length you want. So once again I just tie a little knot to know where I want to start. That's my marker, this is the short end. This will be my working end, the long end. Once again I'll stuff these back down my mandrel. Get them out of the way. You don't have to do this, but it's really, uh, to me they just always get in the way. It's just much easier to uh, to wrap them up and be done with them. Stick them right in there, done deal. So that's the short end, this will be our working end, the long end. I'll try to go slow on the herringbone, I don't know how many of you know how to actually do the interweave. Um, it's pretty a pretty easy pattern to do. You want to you want to take one of your standing ends though. You want to follow this one exactly, and start here. That way, when you get to tie the star knot, you can work your cords back to the center of the tie and get it right in the middle. Um, if I was to come over and start it here, then my cords won't be together to tie the star knot. Um, this piece, you want to end up in the middle. Um, the only way to do that is to follow the leads through. Then you can work them back to the center and uh, center up your next tie. So we'll start here right up this. What you want to do is follow the cord on the right. You're always going to be following this one and doing exactly what the black cord does. If it goes under, you go under almost just like doubling it. Same thing. Under, over, under, over, just as it does. Trace it right on through the pattern. 
Although on this one, we are going to come out of the pattern under here. So we're going to leave that bite, create a new one. But this bite will be inside of that bite when it's tightened. Um, so you can see we left the pattern. So if I had another pin right here, which I could install one, and that's where it would go. So you end up, when you do the herringbone around, you're going to end up with 12 bites. If you count them, you can count the 12 on here around. These just end up inside of your original base knot, um, which I think is a really cool look. Um, you can see like with the gaucho, same thing, 12 bites. Um, but those always exit the pattern over, so they create their own external bite. They're in the same plane, um, so you end up with 12 bites around the perimeter. This same thing, but these set inside, and I think create just a cooler feature to me. So we came out under, so imagine there's a pin right here, you're going to do the same thing, you're going to go back into the pattern under, and you're going to follow the cord on the left. Whatever it does, you do. If it goes under, you go under. If it goes over, you go over. Under, over, under, over. And with this pattern, we always exit the tie under, and we always come back into the tie under. I think the gaucho is the opposite. When you come out, you go, I think you go over, and then you go under coming back in. Um, it's just a subtle difference in the ties, um, but it makes the pattern completely different. So once again, we want to come out here. So we're going to come out of the pattern under. Once again, the same as with the base tie, you want to make sure you keep your cord straight. Um, and then we go back in under. This time we're going to follow the one on the right. Whatever it does, we're going to do exactly the same. Under, over, under, over. to go under, over, under, over, under because I can't get the twist out of the cord sometimes. And as you get further along the tie, you might just do one underpass at a time, not two because it'll get start to get tight and it'll be very hard to eliminate that twist. And that twist will really at the end kind of destroy the look of the pattern. So once again, we came in under, followed the, cord, the lead on the right, and then we're going to go out under. It's going to create its own bite. Just like that. Now we're going to follow the cord on the left. And you can see we're coming across the same color cord we're working on now. So whenever you come across this cord, you're going to do <coughs> you're going to do what it what the black cord in front of it wants to do. So we're going to go under, following the lead on the left, but we go over the blue. This is called splitting the pairs. So you're going to go over the blue and then you Sorry about that. So we're always going to follow the black cord on the left. Whatever it does, we got to do. So we go under, because it went under, but we go over the blue, and we go over, because the black goes over. No matter what, we're going to do whatever exactly that black cord's doing, and we do the opposite when we meet the same color, or the color you're running. Over, under. twist out, over, and as we said we exit, we exit under, get the lay flat, come in under, because we're following the, the black lead on the right again, under, but we're going to go over the blue and over the black. Do the opposite, split these pairs, and then follow this one. So under, over, basically over two, and then you're going to go under.
over and we come out under again. Once you get this herringbone weave down, it's really straightforward and uh, it's, I think it adds a really nice look to a tie. It's my favorite. I, I like it better than the gaucho look. The gaucho fan knot though is pretty cool. I, I think that pattern, the way the, you know, the, the, the pattern is more vertical. This pattern, you know, you can clearly see is more horizontal. Um, but for this tie, I think it's the right one. Once again, we're going to follow the lead on the left. It goes under, so we split that pair. We're going to go over the blue, over the black, because that's what the cord, the lead we're following here on the left does. But then we're going to go under, so split that pair, and under the black. I gotta let my dog in. <laughs> Sorry about that. So we left off um, splitting this pair under, follow the lead on the left, under the black, over. Again, we're going to come out of the pattern under. Turn it over. So we're going to follow the cord on the right this time, just like we have been doing at the top of the mandrel. We try to follow the one on the right. We go under, split the pair. So we're going to go over the blue. Here we're going to go under, because that's what this one's doing, but we're going to split the pair there and go under. Essentially when you get to the blue one, uh, it does the opposite of what you're doing with the black one before it. Uh, splitting the pairs, however you want to think about it. Um, but that's what really creates the, uh, the herringbone look. Bring it down, over, and we come out of the pattern under again. Every time you go in or out of the pattern, you're going under. That's how you get those bites on the inside of the main tie. Okay, we're back to the bottom. So when we're at the bottom, we follow the black cord on the left. Go under, like it's doing. Split the pair and go over the blue. Then we're going to go over the blue, over the black, because this lead goes over. We always follow this one. We always follow the black. Split that pair and go under. Under the black, because that's what the main black cord we're following does. And then we're going to go over. Split that pair when you come out of the black under. Over, over. And then we go under the outside bite. I don't know if you guys have mandrels you bought, have mandrels you made. Um, this is a pretty simple thing. I think you can get a two foot section at Home Depot for three bucks. I think I've made Cut them down into eight inch pieces. You can make three mandrels, different bite sizes. Uh, this one has 12 holes, like I said, which means it spaces out for three, four, six. Um, you probably could die eight bite pattern on this. It'd be a little off balance. I got a different one for that. Um, but the, and then up to 12. But I like it. Um, four and six bite patterns are a breeze with it. Um, so once again, we're coming out the top. So we're gonna follow the black cord on the right. It's going under, we go under and split the pair. And then we're gonna go over the blue and since this black one goes over the black, we go over, split that pair. And then we go under the black. We're following the black cord on the right, under.
and then we're going to go over the blue, over the black, and we're going to come out of the pattern again, under. Turn the mandrel over, once again we're following the cord on the left, so we go under as it does, split the pair over the blue, and then we go over the blue, over the black, because the black, we're following the black lead on the left, under, split that pair, come out under and split that pair. Then we go over, and we're going to come out of the pattern, under the blue, under the black. Split that pair there as well. Make one more pass and we'll have it. So we came out, under. Now we're following the one on the right, so we go under as it goes under. Split the pair. Then we're going to go over the blue, over the black, under the blue, under the black. Always follow this chord. Whatever this black chord does is what we're doing, and this is doing, we're splitting the, the blue pair up all the time. So then we go over, over, under, under, and we come out the bottom of the pattern. Same thing, follow the chord on the left, enter the pattern under, split the pair, and just remember you always got to follow this chord, whatever this chord right here, or these two chords really, go over, under, this is what this chord is going to do, and it always splits the pair, so you're always going to do the opposite, the blue chord will be opposite, if you go under the black when you come out, you go over the blue, so here we go over both, Split this pair under, and then under the black, just like this chord does. Over, over, under, under to come out of the pattern. And it looks like our black cord wants to join the party. We don't really want that though. Stick it back up in there. Okay. At the top of the pattern again. Come on under, should be under this one as well. Like I said, we always go back in under. Actually, we're back to where we started. So there you go. So that's a single pass. Uh, you can see the herringbone weave as it's coming along. You can see I don't pull real tight. I keep this fairly loose on the mandrel. I don't like, uh, if you get it too tight on here, it's hard to, to do double passes and get your cord in without fighting it and wanting to twist. But also, you want to be able to get it onto the ball. You want it to fit on there fairly easily, um, but you want it to fit somewhat snug to start with, um, so there's not too much work. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and double this. Um, and take that knot out now, we don't need that. And once again, to double it, you're just gonna follow it right alongside on the left-hand side. Whatever it does, you do. So if it goes under two, you go under two. If it goes over two, you go over two. Just fall right on around, all the way around so you get back exactly one more time where you started. Um, I just think uh, doubling these type of knots too, it gives you a, uh, a broader view of the pattern. Uh, I think the single pass, when you do that, it just doesn't show enough to me. I like it wider. I think it looks better. Um, I think we'll stop there. I'll get this doubled. And then uh, I think in our next video, we'll work on uh, taking the tie off the mandrel, um, showing how to put the tape on the ball, and uh, how to properly tighten it so it stays centered on the ball um, and you don't have any issues that way.
Um, again, these are available at theparacordist.com. Uh, my Facebook page is Naughty by Nature. I'm Travis Huppert. I haven't shot video before, so I hope this is helpful. Um, if you watch it and have questions, um, just post those to my attention, and I'll do what I can to answer them. Thank you.